Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about conviction or our throat awareness. As you can tell, we still have this the, this row of light is still out, so I might sink further and further into darkness uh, depending on my my random meandering, right? Uh, however, so conviction, right? It seems like a kind of a strange thing to associate with our throat, right? Because conviction. Most people kind of associate like, oh, like my heart's not in it or my heart is in it. Uh, so maybe something a little bit lower or just cerebrally, right? Think about like, oh, if I know X, Y, and Z, I can go about this thing with conviction knowing that I'm right. However, what I want us to think about is kind of splitting our awareness two ways. Uh, this is also going to be helpful with our next one, which is going to be our eyes, right? But think about uh, your own throat as well as your opponent's throat. Let's start off with your opponent, right? So this is really where the, the concept of that conviction really comes into play. So what I want you to think about is whenever you're in a defense, for example, right? So whenever we're introduced to the idea of a guard, the classic place I want you to have your tip is honed in on your opponent's throat, right? So it'll be right there. Now, granted, there is that idea in many different layers, right? So there's, uh, for example, like in kendo, the idea is not that my eye to that tip to that throat, that isn't what's going on. The idea is the extension of a thrust would be going in towards that throat. So it's still throat related, right? So one of them is prepped to do that thrust. The other one is kind of holding it at bay. So if they do come in, I can kind of just like, <laughs> kind of do this thing where they're kind of swinging their arms, but like kind of being able to just from here, just extend out a little bit more, not as powerfully, but still relatively threatening. And the location of the tip is actually quite crucial in knowing your opponent's conviction, right? Now, this is easily counterexampled with people who know what they're doing, right? But if you're used to, or if you've ever seen new folk sparring, they really fall into two camps, <laughs> uh, at least if they're not, uh, if they don't have conviction, right? You might see the, oh dear goodness, don't hit me. <laughs> and so the tip might still be online, but they're clearly kind of backing away from it. Now notice I'm exposing my throat, which is not good, right? Uh, but this, <laughs> this sort of thing uh, clearly shows no conviction in actually being in that fight. Additionally, if you're fighting someone who is told like, oh, by the way, you don't have to fight in this guard, they might kind of, kind of like move around like this uh, or even have it up sort of like this because they may be afraid. So if they are moving without their conviction, it's again, kind of easy to tell. Versus like if you are new-ish to sparring and you do, and you're training under someone who really does prefer uh, having a, a classic middle guard, really think about um, two different ways. There's gonna be more than two, but these two can help. Uh, think about your uh, tuba, your guard, to the tip, to your opponent's throat right? Uh, that is going to have a, a little bit more of a quasi rapier kind of aspect, except instead of the throat, they're usually aiming for the eye, uh, which side note because it's, it's super fun. Uh, if you did have guard tip eye perfectly, they would actually not be able to see your sword they would, or they won't be able to see the blade. They'll be able to see the guard, but not really the sword, which obviously if you go straight <laughs> into their eye, they will have their eye, you no. Know, popped before uh, they actually know what's going on. So, yay. Uh, however, if you're new to sparring, I really want you to think about guard tip throat. The reason for that is this is still a pretty decent uh, all around guard in terms of offense and defense. Uh, as you know, I'm not in love with mill guard in general because it's very jack of all trades, master of none. Um, but I'm choosing to ignore the rest <laughs> of that idiom because, uh, or that um, aphorism aphorism, right? Um, because it actually says it's better than, than nothing. But if we're here, I'm really thinking about my intentionality. So by having guard tip throat, I want to have that conviction to really be able, if they come in, to go in with that thrust 
And if you need to, obviously, like, dip out, <laughs> right? So you don't want to, like, just stay there. Um, when you're sparring, that's what I want you to do, right? So obviously making sure you're, everyone's wearing proper gear, blah, 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 right? But having that conviction to actually go in for a strike. So in this particular drill, yes, I'm thinking about uh, going in for that uh, ski uh, stab, right? However, it doesn't need to be that. For example, if I'm here and I see an opening, I could come up, cut with a diagonal cut, and then either you know pop back into a guard or something like that. Or uh, if you're a little bit more advanced, going in with a feint with a thrust and going up with an uppercut, all sorts of good things you can kind of play with. But for now, at least when you're starting off, I want you to think about honing in on that opponent's throat uh, to, again, instantiate your conviction to fight. So we talked about your opponent's throat. Let's talk about your own, right? So obvious things, don't do this, <laughs> right? You don't want to expose your throat in any way because the throat's kind of important, right? It lets you breathe, it lets you call for help, it lets you do a whole bunch of different things. So you don't want necessarily be, you know, open, especially if you get hit. Uh, that's the easy way to go to sleep is if you get hit very hard under the chin, something's probably going to break and you're not, you may or may not come back. So protect your throat, right? So let's actually talk about that. Uh, something that I learned from Kendo, and this is good for a few different things. So when you are thinking about your throat and you're wearing your helmet and stuff like that, uh, I want you to think about having your chin. So don't think about up and down. Think about pushing it back, right? To kind of like force, force yourself to have a double chin, right? So by doing that, it actually straightens the back a little bit more. So even without considering the gear that we're using, if you're thinking about the throat, that's actually a pretty good way to go, right? However, think about what we're using, right? We're using uh, a helmet piece to cover our throat. So we have a ski piece to cover. Uh, so more or less, if you haven't seen this before, uh, it is a kind of like a plate, right? That comes down from the chin that would cover uh, the throat. So the idea with kendo gear is if I just tuck up, obviously this is all exposed. If I tuck down, it's actually just gonna hit the dull, uh, the, the chest piece, and may not actually be fully effective. Versus if you tuck back, that plate is going to be more flush with your throat and provide more protection. Okay, but what if we don't use, you know, a, a kendo piece of helmet, right? That was a weird statement. <laughs> what if you don't use men, right? What if you don't use a, a helmet, right, from kendo? What if we use stuff from HEMA? That's going to be very different, right? So in HEMA, we use something called a gorget, which is attached to the chest that kind of comes up and covers the throat that way. Now, does that mean, right, I want to just do this and still get stabbed underneath my helmet? No. But that does also mean I have more ability to tuck and move around depending on how far or close that gorget is. Uh, actually, I think my gorget is actually up against my throat. Uh, however, you can move around a lot more, right? So. This kind of adds a, a, an interesting psychological aspect as well. So to kind of give you an example, the, whenever you see someone uh, free sparring full contact, right? This is open hand I'm thinking about. Uh, so no padding, no gear, nothing. Uh, and they're just going full contact sparring. The way they fight is very, 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 very different compared to someone who is just completely decked out in that you know, marshmallow padding, right? Um, I think the most common one I've seen where it's like full, full body is like either blue or, or red. Uh, but if you see two people in fully, like fully encompassed in armor and they're just fighting uh, this way, they're a lot more, they're more likely to take risks. They're less likely to have good form, right? Because first of all, like the armor is going to do weird stuff, right? So they may not be able to like sink down as much as they would normally want to. Um, but what do I mean with this, right? is going to be notice what your gear does to your fighting style is anything you know that you're doing counterproductive right so for example if you have like gorget for days and you have so much protection in your head and you suddenly start you know fighting like this red flag right that probably means you have too much protection or you're feeling too safe in what you're using 
right? Now, obviously, because I don't want to be sued, wear all the equipment that you need to feel safe so you don't get damaged, and obviously, don't sue me, right? But think about how your gear changes how you spar especially in kendo, right? So kendo is very, very regimented in what and how you strike. So in kendo, hitting the arm, no point, right? The, you, you just don't get a point. Would that probably end someone's sword career if you had a sharp sword and you cut their arm? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably very bad, right? So understand the the interesting dynamic of the rule set with the equipment that you're using and your own techniques, right? So the techniques associated in Kendo work for Kendo. The techniques associated with Hema work for Hema. The techniques associated with full foam, uh, you know, Taekwondo or karate sparring works in that way, right? Olympic sparring is very different from full contact sparring, right? So I just want you to be aware of the limitations of your gear and what they do to you, right? And does it actually affect your conviction, right? So if you are so safe, right, you're wearing so much gear that you're not afraid of being hit, <laughs> right? So there's, there's no longer really any conviction to keep going forward, right? Uh, now, obviously, the, the opposite of that is I definitely do not condone full sparring with sharp swords because that's just stupid <laughs> to do, right? It's very, very dangerous and there's no reason to be doing it that way because you can simply do the same thing with dull weapons or even with some, with some gear, just with conviction, right? So all of that to say, right? So like, um, think about your conviction when you're sparring. So that could be, again, aiming for your opponent's throat Right, whenever you're using you know, uh, a middle guard. Obviously, it's kind of weird to aim for your opponent's throat if you're doing this, right? It'd be kind of like that, which, which this is a guard, right? Uh, but it's a different guard, right? So be aware of where your tip is, be aware of where your, in, your intentionality is when you're striking, and be aware of how willing you are to strike and how willing you are to be struck, right? If you're very willing to be struck, that's, Kind of also kind of also bad right so all of this to say be aware of your throat right so with that make sure you stay safe stay humble and keep training